Tyrone, all I can say is this place smells wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. A little piece of the farm here. Yes, yeah. I do. So what do you have for us here? <laughs> so we brought some herbs from the farm. Yes. Uh, we have some mint, we have some rosemary, some echinacea, some lemon balm, some sage. Uh, just clipped some herbs from the farm um, that uh, we use for our bouquets in a bottle. Oh, bouquets mm -hmm. in a bottle. So mm -hmm. how do you put that together? So the first thing is repurpose bottles. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. You know, Definitely can just repurpose that from home, from a bottle that you used at home. Right. Uh, we developed a relationship with a local hotel in Petersburg, oh. so we received their bottles. Excellent. So it turns into the community, you know, mm -hmm. being able to contribute to that. Um, and you start off with your bottle. We like to recommend using rainwater. That's the only water that we use with our plants. Yep. It's the most nutrient dense. So rainwater. And then um, I tell the little lights that come to the farm to choose the herbs that are choosing them. Uh, so if the echinacea is getting your attention, it's attracting you because of the color, yeah. go ahead and clip you some. Go Take ahead. the leaves off, throw it in the rainwater, give it a little drink, um, and then see what else is talking to you. Mm -hmm. So before I got here today, what was talking to me was the sage uh -huh. and the sweet mint. Uh, that's uh -huh. probably what you smell now, yes. um, as well as a little bit of lemon balm. Love lemon balm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So once you clip those, you've got the leaves removed from the bottom of those. You can go ahead and place them in your bottle and um, you've got a bouquet in a bottle. Nice and quick and easy and not complicated. Super simple, yeah. And it's gonna last a long time. Exactly, yep. Mm -hmm. I tell the youth, like the things with this, like the sage and the mint, you get them going in this rainwater, they'll start growing roots and now you can start your own plant as well. Easy to propagate. There you go. Pretty and, and useful, we'll say. Yeah. So. But what else can you do with the herbs? So um, I'm working with youth, right? Uh -huh. and, and, and all kids like to eat, yes. you know, like to drink. And <laughs> yeah. we're trying to encourage them to do it in a healthy way. Right. So um, after we experience them through the smell and the sight and maybe even watching like the pollinators do their thing with yeah. it, we talk about how they can use it at home. Okay. So, um, and the best way for that is infusions. Ah. It could be something as simple as pulling some mint leaves off and throwing mm -hmm. them in your bottled water or your water at home. Um, or it could be making an actual tasani or a tea. All right, yes. so grab in two or three tablespoons of fresh herbs, uh, boil in some water. Um, I tell the youth, we're looking for fish eyes, not fish eggs. Yes. So when those bubbles come in that water, you want the real big bubbles. Mm -hmm. Once you got that, you put your, your herbs, your leaves inside of your pot or inside of your cup, pour that hot water over, let it steep for at least five minutes, let it sit for yeah. at least five minutes. Uh, the longer, the stronger. Yes. So the longer you let it go, the stronger the, mm -hmm. the infusion will be. Um, and then after that, you enjoy it. Sounds great. Now here we have some dried herbs. And so, um, here, I'll take the bottle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I'll swap you out you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So with the dried herbs, how is that different from the fresh herbs then so, to be able to make an infusion? Good question. So it doesn't take as much. So with the fresh herbs, you're probably going for like two or three teaspoons mm -hmm. to make a cup of tea, to make um, a batch of tea. Uh, with the dried herbs, it's only going to take you about a teaspoon. Ah. Right. So I brought some of the fresh just to you know show you what they look like once you've clipped it. And uh, what we teach the youth to do is you know strip the bottom leaves off, just like when you're making the bottle, mm -hmm. uh, the bouquet in a bottle. And then what we do is we wrap, you know, when I first started, a shoestring. I would yeah. wrap a shoestring around here, put a, a thumbtack up on the wall, hang it up. You just want to keep it out of direct sunlight. Once you do that, all the energy will go to the leaves, because that's what we're trying to store, the energy. The energy will go to the leaves, they'll dry out, and before you know it, you'll have something, you'll have dried herbs. Yeah, and what people don't realize is, because the moisture is, of course, leaves the plant, you have nothing but the concentrated oils that are left. Exactly. So you don't need as much dried. And as you do fresh. So yes, mm -hmm. very, very good. Now, finally though, we have another one that I'd like to share. Yeah. So we've got another little project you can use with these herbs that I think most <laughs> people don't think about. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, let yeah. me swap this out with you. No problem. And where do you want to start? So this is our Jadam liquid fertilizer. Uh -huh. um, uh, the way that we teach the youth to do this, we're all about regenerative agriculture. We're all about saving money. We're all about uh, supporting the environment. So when the kids come to the farm and they're talking about weeds, yeah. we tell them that there's no such thing as a weed. This might be something that we didn't plan on growing. So right. those things that maybe we didn't plan on growing or those things that are done growing, we could use those to make liquid fertilizers. So I grabbed some of the herbs that we weren't going to use for the bouquet. Mm -hmm. We've got some lettuce here, some kale here that right. we didn't feed to the chicken. Chickens. So if we put those in a bucket with rainwater, right. and then we add a little bit of leaf mold, about a handful of leaf mold, right. and that's super simple to get. Move some leaves out the way, yeah. you'll see the white. Throw it in there with that rainwater and your green material, let it sit for a week, you have a liquid fertilizer. And every week after that, it gets stronger. Excellent. Do you just keep adding rainwater as you use it? Do you keep adding herbs? How do you keep perpetuating that? So what you'll, honestly, 
these things keep growing. The weeds keep growing. <laughs> and it could be it could be the grass that you're cutting at, uh -huh. your, at your grandma's house. Um, it could be the chickweed that you're pulling up around your grandma's <laughs> yeah. garden, right? Yes. Any green material. So we just continue to make more fertilizer. Yep. And that one bucket, that five gallon a bucket, you're gonna you're gonna cut that. You're gonna dilute it with water. So that goes a long way. Oh, I can only imagine. And all of that wonderful nutrients that are in that yes. water, as well as the microbes. Yes. Because we need to feed our soil with microbes. Exactly. You know, people don't realize that our soil is alive mm -hmm. and that it's not just dirt. Exactly. It's actually a living entity and that biome is so rich. Mm -hmm. The richer it is, the better our plants. Mm -hmm. Better our plants, better our gardens. Exactly. So. That should be. Well, Tyrone, thank you. I think no you've worries. given some people ideas on what they can do with the herbs that they have in their garden, or maybe inspire them to go out and get some herbs to grow yeah, on their yeah. garden. That would be great. Yeah, yeah.